Yeah, okay. Um, well, basically, I wrote my own Fluid Dynamics software, which is called Akadin, and it's, uh, well, developed in Rust, and, um, yeah. So, first of all, uh, I'm currently doing my PhD at the Institute of Theoretical Physics in Münster, uh, in Germany, just so you know my background. And in my work, I work mostly, well, I work mostly with uh, acoustically propelled microparticles. So, these are mainly um, just Microparticles, they usually have some kind of um, asymmetric structure. And when you uh, suspend them in some kind of fluid uh, and expose them to ultrasound waves, um, you get these, uh, these secondary uh, kind of vortices um, or secondary flows that form around these particles and they propel the particle in some direction. And uh, this is interesting for both like uh, research purposes and also for potential technical applications. But uh, the theoretical background for this um, is really difficult as long as you want to study particles that have a complex shape. So you can do analytical approximations for very simple shapes like spheres or cylinders. But uh, as soon as you want to do something more, um, more complicated, uh, you have to do it numerically, basically. And to approach this from a theoretical background, you need to consider the compressible Navier-Stokes equation, uh, which I displayed here. And uh, well, as you can imagine, this already looks quite complex and solving this numerically can also get quite complex very quickly. Uh, usually you would choose some pre-existing computational fluid dynamics software for this, but for our use case, um, everything is a little bit more complicated. So just to explain you the basic setup that we have for most simulations, um, we basically have a channel and in this channel, we have the particle that we want to study and then we input uh, an ultrasonic wave from one side um, at, on the channel and then we have to dampen it away on the other side so that we don't get uh, unwanted reflections back at the particle. And the problem with this is that we need to have extremely high spatial resolution and also extremely high temporal resolution. To give you a rough uh, number for this, um, for simple 2D cases you have around 300 to 400,000 uh, finite volume cells. And for um, yeah, more complex 3D simulations, it can quickly get to multi-million um, uh, finite volume cells per simulation. And for the temporal resolution, we need about 100,000 to 1 million uh, time steps per wave period. And we need to simulate a few hundred wave periods. So you can see that the computational effort of these simulations quickly gets out of hand. And to sort of combat this, um, well, first of all, we need software that is both um, modifiable so that we can make sure that the software actually does what it's supposed to do, um, which isn't the case with most commercial servers. And then it also needs to be very fast. So if we do these simple simulations in 2D with open foam, we need over a month per simulation and that's just not feasible. So as any sane person, I wrote my own computational fluid dynamics server um, in Rust. It's based on the finite volume method, uh, uses a simple C solver model um, where the fluid domain is essentially discretized onto highly sparse ELL matrices that are then solved uh, with a, an optimized version of the big step solver, which uh, exploits um, the high temporal coherence that I have in my simulations. And yeah, everything works with two and 3D unstructured meshes um, that can consist of various different cell types. So in the beginning, I um, I programmed everything um, on the CPU using just rayon thread pools and without any extensive optimizations or profiling, I read speeds that are pretty comparable to open form, but that's, uh, well, well, way too slow for my purposes. So I kind of decided to exploit um, hardware accelerators like the GPU um, for this kind of thing. And, uh, well, I should also mention that I have some quite complex reflection suppression methods um, implemented in my solver, uh, like um, PML, explicit and implicit forcing and relaxation zones and uh, stuff like that, um, which is one of the main concerns why I, I wrote this for software in the first place. Like I'm, I cannot implement these methods in commercial solvers basically. So uh, what did I do to implement the CUDA kernels at all in Rust? Because um, as you may know, there aren't a lot of options um, we have currently in the Rust ecosystem to write GPU stuff. Um, like 
the first option, um, you could use um, the Rust CUDA project, which basically uses the, um, the LLVM uh, NVIDIA PTX backend to compile Rust code directly to PTX and then execute it. Or you can use uh, Rust GPU and compile Rust basically to Vulkan compute shaders. Um, the first option is uh, not very good because uh, Rust CUDA is still extremely experimental and also not very actively developed. The last commit is over two years old on GitHub. Um, and the Vulkan option is also not ideal because uh, Vulkan compute shaders are not as fast as CUDA is, which uh, isn't really acceptable for a high performance uh, kind of software. So what did I do? Well, I kind of bit the bullet and wrote the CUDA kernels in CUDA. <clears throat> so this uh, CUDA is the C++ dialect um, for writing CUDA kernels. But instead of um, compiling this to a single execution binary like we normally do with CUDA, I compiled it to PTX. Um, so we can use CMake for this. You just have to make sure to set a few flags, then turn on CUDA separable compilation, as well as CUDA, <coughs> sorry, Mm. as well as <coughs> CUDA PTX compilation. <coughs> so, um, sorry, I'm just losing my voice a little bit. <laughs> um, okay, so I then compile this basically to PTX using NVCC or any other um, CUDA compatible compiler, and then load, load the PTX kernels using Rusty binders. Um, now I do this using the cast crate, which is part of the Rust CUDA project originally. Um, and the code is kind of structured with a name, the source code and a list of dependencies. <clears throat> I then um, basically just load the dependency or figure out the dependencies, <clears throat> load everything together. If I, don't, if I don't have dependencies, I can just load the module itself. If I do have dependencies, I can use this linker wrapper um, to link everything together, then build a Cuban from this, which can then be loaded as a module. And the funny thing is I kind of have to do this a few times. Um, if it fails, I don't exactly know why, but sometimes the driver just feels funny. So I retry a bunch of times. Now for the kernel dispatches, um, I basically have one global device function, which is composed of a name and a list of dynamic parameters because I cannot lift the um, Rust dynamic parameters over to the C++ side where it's implemented through um, substitution templates. Um, and yeah, well, to do this without a bunch of boiler code, I kind of defined these uh, C++ macros, which simplifies things a lot. And then for the execution side, you basically just have to get a reference to the device function from the loaded module, which can be done just through the name. Um, then you figure out a launch configuration that is suitable for the thing you want to do and then just launch it. Now, this entire thing is then wrapped into a rusty function, basically, so it's uh, safe and uh, nicer to use. Now, in the beginning, I mentioned some flexibility and usability aspects that the software should have. And um, I kind of implemented this through uh, Lua scripting, which are um, well implemented through the mLua crate, which was very handy. And I also wrote my own domain-specific language to define different governing equations in case I want to simulate something other than the compressor and Navier-Stokes equations. Um, yeah, just um, for the last slide, I kind of want to leave you with some benchmarks. So first of all, I have the parallel speed up on CPU cores. Um, just to prove to you that this problem actually scales linearly and is a good um, good candidate for GPU parallelization. So you can see that this, um, the scaling is pretty much linear, except for these, this um, kind of jump at uh, eight cores. And this is because um, my CPU uses SMT, simultaneous multithreading. So um, the cores from eight onward share some resources with the first core. So you don't get quite linear scaling, but on a processor without SMT, uh, that should be linear. And uh, to kind of um, undermine this point, um, I have some comparison between the GPU and the CPU, CPU implementation. And here on the right hand side, you can see this plotted linearly. And uh, the GPUs in this configuration are so much faster than the CPU configuration that they're basically just horizontal lines in this plot. <laughs> so I had to plot this logarithmically, such as that you can actually differentiate two GPU configurations. Um, and 
overall my GPU solution is um, pretty much uh, 60 times faster than the CPU implementation, which uh, also matches quite nicely with the speed up over OpenFoam. And I think that qualifies as brazingly fast. So if you want to read more about this um, or contact me for research purposes or whatever, you can visit my website and uh, with this um, going to leave you for questions. Thank you very much um, for that's my video. There it is. Thank you very much for that really nice talk. Um, that was good to see. Um, someone in chat can type that GitHub link because I now need to talk and can't talk and type, which is why it took me a while to unmute. Um, um, and we get lots of hype coming in the chat. It's so always really nice to see at the end of these talks. Um, lots of people doing um, colon clap and thank you. Um, we have one question in the Q and A box so far. Um, but the question says, um, "Did you consider using WGPU?" Um, I did, um, but this kind of has the same um, problem like um, I had with with uh, the Vulkan um, thing. So um, basically, the compute shaders in Vulkan or OpenGL are just not as fast as as CUDA currently, um, which is unfortunate. Um, that's not really an issue with uh, with the Rust ecosystem with the Rust framework. It's more of an issue with um, with the current Vulkan drivers, <laughs> um, but yeah, I kind of had to stick with CUDA for now. <laughs>